Welcome to our video on how to paint and work with stones in counselling, which we hope you're going to enjoy. And I'm delighted to welcome Angie Petrie to uh, this video. Angie's been making stones for me for some years now. Um, mm. So where did the interest in stones begin? Um, I suppose I've always had an interest in stones. I can remember being a little girl. We moved around a lot and there weren't so many playthings. So the natural things that around us became our toys. Um, I remember my mum teaching me how to paint a stone to look like a ladybird. So that's probably my first memory. Your very really. first <laughs> stone that you painted. And this now has become uh, quite a big thing in the counselling world, especially the creative counselling world. Um, do you have to be artistic to paint stones, do you think? Um, personally? I don't really think of myself as an artist. I think that um, just to have a go and paint them and see what comes from see it what happens. Is, is part of the process, part of the fun. Um, and it can really capture things that you didn't know were there. Thank you. And you've actually brought some stones with you that haven't been painted. Do you want to say mm. just something about those to begin with? Well, it's quite interesting if you're working with clients that you could choose stones that haven't got anything on at all and just have a look and see what they look like, what they feel like, how heavy they are, mm. um, or maybe this one with a hole through it and, and what it might mean. What does that say to you? Mm. They're interesting, aren't they? And the different colour, you've got some sparkle on this one. Was that <laughs> natural, Andy? <laughs> maybe not so natural. <laughs> I quite enjoy adding a little bit here Add and there. Add a little bit here and there. So like, asking the client, you know, which one do you feel like today? Would that be the kind of thing you might do? That might be the question, or it might be that they're a bit stuck with something. They yeah. might have got to a point where um, they're unsure what to say next, or they're unsure where to go, and there's a feeling bubbling up, but they haven't really got words for it. Mm. So maybe it's just a way of, would you like to choose a stone and mm. see if there's something that comes from it? And what you said about the weight, that one's really heavy, and you could say, gosh, it just it all feels so heavy at the moment, that kind mm. of thing, mm. yeah. Brilliant. Well, so natural stones, go down the beach, collect them, see what, what you like. And there's some amazing stones and shells. And even driftwood can be important. I love the idea of you having your natural toys when you were a child. Angie's set up her equipment here. What do we need to get started? And I guess the first thing is stones. <laughs> so where did these come from, Angie? Um, I, I have chosen some things off beaches in the past, but what I like to do, because I sell mine as well, mm. is that I like to buy them, so I make sure that I go somewhere like um, B&Q, they'll do cobblestones, okay, um, or beach cobblestones, and trying to find ones that are the right shape and size for what you want. And quite smooth, I guess, being, being yes. smooth is important, and, and the shape. So if you were about to... Um, decorate, shall we say, your stones, what basic equipment would, would you need? So basically to start, you could just start using pens. You wouldn't need to do paints if you, if you didn't want to go that way. You could literally just start using the pens. These are special pens, are they, for, for drawing on um, stones? Pens that I've chosen to use are Posca pens because they're, um, they're waterproof, so they're they should stay on the stone really well. Yeah, um, it's uh, always and they have a. It's like actually, oh okay, yeah. So that's it's got quite, quite a thick um, point to it. Yeah, so it's different size points. Different as well. size points. So you've got a fine oh, okay point. Yeah. It tells you on the side the size of point. Lovely. So you just look for the size that you want. Okay, and you've got loads of brushes there. Were they very expensive, Angie? Um, you can find them really cheaply. These ones are actually makeup brushes that I okay. bought in a um, in a local store and it was they were something like 199. Oh that's they brilliant. I would never have thought of going for makeup gr um, brushes. That's fantastic. Well the nice thing with makeup brushes you can get a real point and of and also some of them quite good for feathering. Oh lovely. <laughs> Anything else you would say is is necessary to get started? I think it's quite nice once you've um, Use your pens or your paint, whichever you choose to go with, that you varnish them. Ah. 
Uh, because they're going to be handled, they're going to be mm. used, and they're also going to be put with other stones, mm. it can be very quickly that it starts to wear away. Um, and if you want your your stone to remain vibrant, yeah. it's always good to put a couple of coats of varnish on. How do you know what to paint? Well, sometimes I get an order, ah. <laughs> so then I have like to. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I would go along and think, oh, which which stone is it really speaks to me is going to be the right shape for the wording that I've got to use or the picture I want to put on it. Which stone speaks to me? So what would that be like doing that now? I think I'll reproduce this one. Don't fail. One of the the transactional analysis uh, injunctions, don't yes. fail. Um, we've got don't make a fuss. Um, don't trust, don't show off. Um, they're quite powerful. We'll be saying a bit later how we use those. So don't fail. And how will you approach reproducing this one here? This hasn't got an overall colour underneath. I've used the colour of the stone as the backdrop. But this part, the white part, is painted. Okay. So I start doing the painting first so it's got time to dry. And that's a acrylic paint, so tell us a bit yeah. about where you got those. You can get these from anywhere at the moment. Um, pick them up quite cheaply in places like Tesco's. Mm -hmm. um, my basic is the primary colours. Yeah. We go back to school with your red, red, yellow and blue and a black and white. So I remember red and blue make purple and which makes green? It must be blue and blue yellow. And yellow. Blue <laughs> and yellow is green. Back to school. Oh, that's that's brilliant. So you've got your basic set. Mm, and you mix them all together, you get yeah. a nice brown. So as well. you wouldn't you wouldn't use the white pen on this. You would choose the uh, acrylic paint. You could you could go if you're just using the pens. You could go in and use the white pen on this. Yeah. But the acrylic gives you a nice base, a nice coat. Okay. So if you're, because this one has got writing across the top of it as well, yeah. it's quite nice to use the paint to give you a really good flat surface to write on as well. Fantastic. So where would you start then? So I'd start, obviously pouring out my paint. <laughs> um, I've got a nice handy little palette here. Yeah. Um, it's got so some tissue paper underneath. Is that baking paper? Um, what yep. do you call it? Baking paper? Baking parchment. Parchment, yeah. Um, and it can keep the, the acrylics nice and, dr and wet. So and they don't the dry out. That's kitchen roll underneath. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That's a top tip. In every home. <laughs> <laughs> um, so using that and one of my small brushes, yeah. I would recreate the swirl of the, of the scroll yeah. on the don't fail. So using the paint, I'm creating the basic shape. This bit generally looks quite messy. And I would tend to, with acrylics, use a couple of layers. I guess the depth of colour. So you've obviously got your jar of water there as well that you need. Quite soothing just watching you. Do you find it restful too? to do the painting? It's really restful. It's something that I, as part of my self-care self now, that I know that sometimes I just disappear off. I've got a, a place I can go down the garden. Yeah. And uh, start doing the stones. I'm not going to be too fussy with the edges because I'm going over it with the black. Okay. So the beauty again of, of painting your own is that you can you keep going until you're happy with it. <laughs> so while that dries, I would probably start doing the don't that you see at the top. So I've got red for this. I'm really aware that I haven't marked anything out and that other people may want to. Okay. Um, so it may be easier for them to to choose to kind mark out their left. Sketch screen. out where it goes. W would you what, do that with a pencil or something? Simple? You can. 
if you do it with a pencil, it does rub off. Um, I, I choose not to. Maybe it's just more. You started with a T. <laughs> she said, using an open-ended question. <laughs> Why would you start at the end of the word? Because this is where I want it to finish. Okay, excellent. <laughs> So part of doing well, you the took stones, me by surprise there because I was expecting a D, but of course I'm, I'm looking at the, the scroll shape, so it makes sense. Yeah, and part of doing the stones is is that you're, um, you want to get, um, everything on the stone. It's quite yeah. a small surface is, to work on. It is. Um, so sometimes wording I find is better, done upside down because you're not reading it. <laughs> so write it somewhere. Do it upside down. Um, because you can miss letters if you do it the right way up. Yes, sir. How fascinating. <laughs> um, so do it upside down and back to front. <laughs> it just, again, it sort of takes the pressure off um, because you can want to be a bit perfect with this sometimes. And actually this is the base coat. This is the initial and it's the, it's the add of the extras, the black or the sparkle or the little bit of wording that makes the difference. That again. So you've completed the word don't now, but you said that's just the first coat. You'd do that again, would you? I would, I'd, I'd go over that again. And just checking the letters and just going back over Neatening it. Neatening it up kind of thing. Yeah, so there's the, so you can the, see the apostrophe the, there. You can see the difference in the colour of red yeah. on those. Yeah. The varnish will make a difference to it, and also the black outline will make the red darker. Yeah. Is this dry yet? It feels dry. Mm -hmm. How long would you leave it normally? Again, I'd probably work with it pretty, pretty, pretty much straight away. So how would you um, get the, the black outline? It's just fairly steady hand. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, now that's where it gets interesting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> and looking at the scroll to make sure that I've got the right uh, way of, of working. So it's coming around the edge. I want to create the circular point. Doing the circle. And then back around again. years ago I was actually covering that edge which was a little bit it's so neat so there's our scroll so we got the don't and we've got the scroll so just for the sake of time um, how what how would you approach the word fail because it's quite a bit thinner would you use one of the Posca pens for that yes I've got a very thin one here yeah um, but before I use the pens, I just make sure there's enough ink on it. Yeah. So you press down on the pen just to make sure there's enough ink at the nib and try it out on some paper. So you have to press them down to get the flow of ink. Yeah. Oh, you that's can helpful. hear the, yeah. Yeah, the sound I of the, the ball going up and down just to make sure that the paint's all mixed. Yeah. Otherwise you could get quite a light um, colour and that's it might really not helpful. stay. So with this one, because I'm... I need the fail to be within that margin. I would actually look at the centre point, and I would use I would go for the eye first. Okay. So I know um, when we when I did the don't it was upside down, and I worked from the T across. Yeah. But I'm looking at a midpoint now. Yeah. Um, again, you might like to mark it. I. <laughs> you wing I it. <laughs> I'll go in. I get it. I so it. I've got the IL on the end there, and I know that the A and the F will come we'll next to in. those. Yeah. So I'll do the A. Perfect. And That's a, quite an interesting message for you as you're making it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's wonderful. Fascinating. And then you would would you use the Posca pens to outline? The don't. Yes, go back to the the really thin one. Again, checking that it's working. Yeah. Before going around the outline. Maybe just outline the N or something 
Um, and then we'll just see how you do that. I'll, go, the I'll go with the yeah. tea. Okay. And I find it's quite helpful sometimes to just turn the stone, if you want to do a straight line, yep. use the whole pen and okay. the whole movement of the arm rather than twisting. Because you'll find you'll get an arch if you twist. So if you do a, a straight line, you're moving the whole thing across rather than, if you can see what I mean, rather than twisting. So move the stone and then you can do, get the line straight. Yeah. Perfect. Andy, that was really, really interesting and terribly soothing. <laughs> I feel quite relaxed. <laughs> We're now going to take a look at some of the ways you can work with stones in the counselling room. Perhaps a place to start would be with the don'ts where we left off, don't fail. That was a strong script I picked up in childhood. I don't think my parents ever said that to me, but I knew the praise and the affirmation I got if I succeeded. So don't mm. fail was a big script for me. Don't show off was another. <laughs> Don't, don't show off was a difficult one because um, it kind of had the sub-message of don't enjoy performing. Mm. Don't be miserable. Don't bring that face in here. Don't be important. Don't trust. Mm. That, that feels quite a painful one, doesn't it? The big story there. I think there's one that says don't need. Don't need. So. Don't feel. Can you say there's don't need? Don't need. Yeah don't need what did that mean for you you can't show your need be and there for others be there yourself. for everyone else what does everyone else need and of course it, going back to transactional analysis they the language there is the counter injunctions or the stress drivers or whatever mm. you like to call it what we did in order to cope with these awful feelings which are things like be strong um, hurry up mm. <laughs> um, or the things that we we did to cope with these painful feelings be perfect yeah. um, I'm looking at the please others please others <laughs> yes this is one quite powerful way to help people tell us tell us what their childhood was like mm. you got any other thoughts well, there's on another that? one there try harder that this fits a little bit with yeah, your it's, um, yeah another driver trying to be perfect, trying to not fail, trying not to um, do all those things that that you you naturally do as a child. You, yeah. you do fail, you do mess up. It's okay to do those things, but when you're taught it's not. Yeah. Um, actually, try harder can, can just stop you from ever feeling like you ever achieve anything. That's really powerful. When clients have identified the negative message and actually owned them, this is what mm. I think. I've never thought about it before, but I recognize myself in these stones. One of the things I like to encourage them to do is to choose one of the affirmations that they would like in, in, their, um, in their lives, in their personal, what we would call scripts, in their self-message. So mm. choosing some of these um, that they can actually pick up and the first one I've got here is I matter mm. it's okay to have needs mm. um, it's okay to have a voice yeah. um, I am okay it's, this isn't magic but I do encourage clients very often to to own um, don't need let's take your don't need one and say mm. this is the way I've lived my life up until now but I am learning, I'm working on that, and I want to pick up, it's okay to have needs. Mm. And maybe I've got to hold both of them together for a while, because I'm coming in and out of them, but gradually I want to own this more than this. Mm. To actually give them a choice what, uh, what is possible. I don't know if that, that resonates with you that you don't yeah. immediately drop one and pick the other up but for a while they both coexist yeah, and, and they can I mean almost like scales at times where you maybe focus too much on needing everything to be your way and then go back to oh no I can't 
have yeah. those needs. So you might end up really, That's really trying to come to a point where it's more balanced. Definitely. And this is okay to have a voice. I think that is such a, an important message because mm. so many people feel silenced. And there are some of the, the, the stones over there that are uh, encourage them to, one of them says, take a risk. If you can mm. see, take a risk, yeah. There are some other positive uh, injunctions here. Feel the fear and do it. Mm. It was not my fault. That, that's quite a powerful one for clients to pick up and hold on to. I love the physicality of stones, that you can literally hold this and say, it's not my responsibility, I am putting it down. Mm. And, and that, using your body, using your energy, your feelings, holding on, letting go, will have a, a powerful impact. And you can pile them up as well. So if you've got a few of these don'ts together, and then you can really feel the weight of that. Wow, that is powerful. How heavy that is compared to when you've placed them all down and you've picked up one that, that just gives you a replacement and an energy like, in it. I am okay, I offer you that. <laughs> Thank you. Great, so that's, that's definitely one way of just allowing clients to choose what their inner scripts, their inner messages, their self-talk is, and what would gently challenge that. Aware mm. that it's not magic, it doesn't happen overnight, but it's a direction of the therapy. It's a direction and it's also something that you can journey along with um, a client. It's not, not necessarily that something you do in one session and then mm. forget about, but those t stones then could journey with you as you walk along too. And taking pictures of them and encouraging clients to actually find their own stones maybe mm. and write messages on them that they want. It's a good yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Angie, you've got your own box of stones here. Would you like mm. to talk about how you use that? Um, when I started doing the stones, I would create them and, and gift them to other people. Um, and then I started to build my own collection things that I created and then realized how personal it was and I didn't want to give away. Um, one of these, indescribable, and it looks quite plain and not a lot going on for it, but when you turn it over, wow. there's so much change. And um, that's I, a real that powerful... That quite rough. Is that rough? <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> it yeah. is totally unexpected on the underside. Yeah. And, and that's quite a big part of my journey. Yeah. Um, and my, my journey with not only with counselling, but also with being able to create these stones and, and how they've taken off. Absolutely. And there's some beautiful ones. I love the hope one. This is one of my latest um, joys, I think. Uh, just creating a double layer of hope. That's beautiful. <laughs> and just incredible holding it and knowing that, that I can hold hope. Yeah, it's um, such an important word, isn't it? And you are believed, I matter, mm. I'm enough, faith, unique. These are just such positive, beautiful words and such lovely stones. And it's part of my self-care yeah. to look after myself. I can have my, my box of stones that I can focus on. Mm. Uh, and sometimes you just need that quiet time to you have do. a look and remember some of the unique experiences in life. These stones with a Y around them, I think you, you created those yourself, didn't you? Mm, how, yes. how did they come about? Um, I happened to have some wire where I was doing the painting, um, so I wrapped it around the stone and then decided to varnish it. I was thinking a bit about um, the wire not really being part of the stone, yeah. but more about, I suppose, my journey maybe, things that I've, I've been wrapped in. Yeah. Um, but it was a colleague of mine who had one in her pocket yeah. and kept holding it yes. and finding that, that she could really feel grounded when she grasped it. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Yeah, no, I like that and I can really feel that just if you're feeling a bit scared or a bit wobbly, just to hold on tight. And These are the, the faces with all their little emotions <laughs> on. There's some wonderful faces here. Yeah. So what would you use these for? Well, I was struck by um, 
sometimes uh, clients get a bit stuck with what an emotion is or how they yeah. really feel about something yeah and they could at that point sometimes shut down not want to go any further so these have been used to um for them to choose one maybe that they they feel at the moment or they felt in a specific situation um hold on to it and then and then they could talk about the face putting it out there rather than connecting with it internally yeah the other way that i've used them is maybe a family member that it's reminded <laughs> them of or someone that they've they're wanting to look at specifically yeah. uh, again it's quite an easy way to pick a, a face that you can then project onto project rather onto than them. um trying to imagine something it's powerful i like them i like them very much i just wasn't sure that's really helpful because i wasn't quite sure how i would use them um but i can see that now that would be brilliant so who is that that person that's causing you distress i guess it could be someone at work or something i suppose these are more about affirmations and thinking about specific subjects maybe that you're talking about in the room so okay. you may be looking at love you may be looking at hope you may be looking at peace um, I have a faith so there are some stones in here that are more faith-based um, but I, I like to think that it's more universal mm. and um, again it's it may be that they're really struggling on what faith is and just picking up the stone and holding it and talking about it out here allows them to really yeah. project what's going on there. What does that mean to me? I like I like the, the double layer that you've done there, a bit like you did with the um, the hope one, the hope in, your, one yeah. in your box over there, wasn't it? I think that's very effective. You've done it with joy as well. Oh, you've done it with lots of them. This was the, my latest exploit having a go at something a bit different yeah, it's but, beautiful um, um and i do have crystals in the bottom that if you know if we come through a breakthrough sometimes it's nice to take a little gem away with you oh no that's um, special that's lovely yeah <laughs> and you can fit it in your purse you know that you, yeah as a reminder and then when you just see it it's it's something to remind you of what's happened in the room that's beautiful i love that Angie, thank you so much. You've given us so much. Now, I would love to spend hours painting stones, um, but I won't. <laughs> not right now, not at this stage of my life. And that's why I need people like you to make them for me. So if other people like me would like to order stones, I'm going to leave a contact detail at the end of this video where they can get in touch with you. And roughly how long do you think it takes to turn around uh, an order, say we wanted five stones or something? How long does that take you to do? And generally five stones, that's not going to take very long at all to, to turn over. Um, it just depends on the, the stones they've chosen. Whether so the client, the person buying, would have to to know what they wanted, or do you have a, a, a set set selection, for example? I do have some sets. There are um, the face stones, these emotion stones. The emotion stones. Um, I have those as sets. I also have yeah. the um, injunctions and drivers. I have yeah. this set available as well. Yeah. Um, but you could choose whether you want something just very simply done. Um, so just the wording yeah. or whether you want it more coloured um, so you get a choice of what you like because it's basically it's creating what, whatever you what we you want choose. that is lovely well thank you hugely this has been great fun and I've learnt loads so there you go everybody that's how you can either make your own or get Angie to make stones for you and I hope it's given you some ideas of how you can use them in your counselling practice, literally holding on to something and maybe putting something down and picking something else up as, a, as an act of intention. And that message of hope, yeah. again, that things can be different, things can change. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.